I2IN. And to calculate the constant of proportionality, we had to evaluate this for a certain values of the i's. One of the things that I told you was, if you, if you set i i equal to i, so for example, you set i1 equal to 1, and i2 equal to 2, and i n equal to n, then what you were able to verify is the constant of proportionality that sits here is just the determinant of u. But because we're dealing with s u n, the s tells us special. Why are these matrices special? They're special because they have determinant equal to 1. So det u is 1, so I just get back my epsilon. So there are my invariants. Now, let me try to, to figure out um, a simpler set of operators that is going to commute with, with these u's. Let's imagine that I've got um, some sort of a, a tensor now. Um, so I've got something with two indices. And what I mean by that is I just mean that if I was to transform this thing, how many matrices you would act on it? Two, one for each index. Is everyone happy with that? So that's what I mean when I've got these two indices. Now I want to introduce an operator, P12. And what P12 does when it's acting on psi, it changes psi ij into psi ji. So what does P12 do? It swaps the indices of the tensor. That's all it's doing. Okay? Um, now let's do the following. Let's imagine taking P12, and we won't act on psi ij itself. We'll act on u i k u j l psi k l. So what is this equal to? Well, when I act with p12, it will swap the i and the j. Everyone happy with that? Okay. In fact, maybe I should put in one more step to make this clearer. Um, I'm looking at p12 acting on psi prime i j. So we go like that. And p12 acting on a tensor with two indices swaps the two indices of the tensor. So what p12 will what p12 will do when acting on psi prime i j, it will swap the j and the i. So I will get u, j, k, u, um, i, l, psi, k, l. Everybody happy with that? And now, I am just going to relabel the k and the l. So what I call k, I will call l. What I call l, I will call k. So I get u, j, l, u, i, k, psi, l, k. But I can write this as uik, so there's my uik, good. Uh, what's going on here? That's a u. So there's my uik, good. I can write ujl, there's my ujl, good. And then instead of writing psi lk, I can write this as p12 psi kl. Okay? And now let's compare this expression over here with this expression over here. Both of them act on psi kl. What was special about psi kl? Nothing was special about psi kl, right? It could have been any tensor with two indices. So this is true when acting with any tensor on two indices. And what we've learned is we can first perform the transformation and then act with the tensor that swaps the indices, or we could act with the tensor that swaps the indices and then perform the transformation. And because this is true acting on any tensor with two indices, it means that thing swapping indices commutes with the, the matrices which are performing the SUN transformations. What that means is I can simultaneously diagonalize these operators. 
how would I diagonalize P12? Huh? If I act with P12 on this thing, on psi ij plus psi ji, it'll swap the indices of the first term and the second term, so this is left exactly the same. That's invariant. What about if I act on this term? I'll get this swapped, so this will turn into psi j i minus psi i j, and this is minus psi i j minus psi j i. Can you see how easy it is to diagonalize P12? That's an easy problem. It's much easier than diagonalizing um, the U's themselves. So what should I start doing? Well, if I want to diagonalize the, the SUN representations, I should start considering tensors that have a definite symmetry under swapping of their indices. Here I used two indices, but you could have done this for more than two indices. You could have had ten indices. And what you can show yourself is, if you've got a tensor with ten indices and it has some definite symmetry under swapping two indices, it'll have that same symmetry after you have performed an SUN transformation. So if I break psi up into its two pieces, if I was to write psi ij is equal to one half psi ij plus psi ji minus one half, uh, sorry, plus one half psi ij minus psi ji, okay? And maybe I want to call this sij and this aij, why? Because this is symmetric under swapping the two indices, this is anti-symmetric, okay? then what I know is if I perform an SUN transformation, these people will not mix with those people. They will stay separate. Okay? So what have we done? We've reduced this representation into two reps. So what we've now got is we've got a really interesting link between the permutation group, which starts to swap indices, and the special unitary group. In fact, um, I'm, I, I will never be able to do justice to this um, topic in such a short state, uh, amount of time, and my present state of knowledge on it would also be a challenge. What this is called in the mathematics literature is Frobenius sure duality. And if you, if you want to make precise everything that I'm going to tell you today, that's where you should go and look at Frobenius sure duality. A lot of interesting results there to take a look at. But before we do that, I want to convince you that this is not something that is that new. Let's imagine we had an electron. Um, so we've got an electron, um, and it can have spin up or it can have spin down. And we've got a second electron which can have spin up or it can have spin down. Okay? If I want to couple these two electrons, well, I can form a total of three states. Here they are. So there are three states that are symmetric. And I want that to be a minus. Those are symmetric under swapping the two indices, okay, the two electron wave functions. And here is a single state. That is anti-symmetric under swapping the two indices. And there you see again the triplet and the singlet. When you perform a rotation, the triplet and the singlet do not mix. Well, this is just what we called Sij above, and this is what we called Aij. This is anti-symmetric under swapping the two states. This is symmetric under swapping the two states. So here I've shown you how in one line you can just immediately write down what are the triplet and the singlet, just knowing that this operator P12 would commute with rotations. And of course it would, right, because we didn't use any special properties of the U's to show that it commuted with the U's. So this would commute with anything, okay? Okay, so, so now let's start to um, use this to study the irreducible representations of SUN.
Now, there's a very nice way to write down these representations. Ereps of S U N. What do we want to do? We want to now consider tenses that have a definite symmetry under interchange of any two indices. So we're going to start drawing diagrams that look something like this. Okay. If you're okay, so so what are the rules for this diagram? First of all, um, number of boxes in each row decreases as you go down the diagram. So as you go this way, the number of rows decreases. Doesn't have to strictly decrease, so we could have two rows next to each other with the same number of boxes. Okay. And the next thing is if you count the number of boxes, number of boxes is equal to the number of indices on your tensor. So this would be a tensor with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 indices. So that tensor would have 17 indices. And furthermore, we're in the game of, of making things that um, are symmetric or anti-symmetric under swapping. And the way that we get this tensor is as follows. Each index here would, would each index on the tensor would correspond to a box here. Okay? The first thing that you should do is symmetrize indices in a given row. So if I was to swap any of these two indices, I want my tensor to be symmetric. And then I should anti-symmetrize indices in a given column. So let's see. Look at SIJ. If I swap the two indices of SIJ, this thing is symmetric, right? So the picture for SIJ, SIJ would be that. If I look at AIJ, that's anti-symmetric under swapping two indices. So my picture for AIJ would be that. Okay. Let's maybe do one more example, which is slightly more complicated. Let's take um, Psi IJK. And this is what Psi IJK looks like. We have got an I, a J, and a K. So let's follow our rules. What do we want to do? Well, the first thing that we want to do is um, we want to symmetrize in I and J. And then we want to anti-symmetrize in I and K. So when you draw the box, um, this is what you'd land up getting. Everybody clear what the rules are? So I took this guy, symmetrized an I and J, and I take this thing and I anti-symmetrize an I and K. So if I swap I and K, I get that with a minus sign. If I swap I and K, I get that with a minus sign. Okay? So that's so you draw a box, you can write down a tensor. Now for each of these R. Ah, the other thing is, um, can somebody tell me what would be the picture with n boxes? If I've got n boxes in a 